you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook. Marita and Eric, well done. If that's the level of cooking we're going to see from both of you, we'll have a very tough decision ahead of us. Marita, what is your entree? I'm gonna do black cod steamed in taro leaves with a pigeon pea puree. Wow. And Eric, what are you gonna be making? I'm gonna be making homemade egg noodles with a lobster sauce. It's time to get started on your entrees. You'll have just 60 minutes to make us the best main course you've ever made in your entire life. The cooking time for your entree starts now! One of my family's favorite dishes, but I'm gonna put an Asian spin on it today because I'm trying to keep it with an Asian theme. I'm gonna use a uh, katara and make egg noodles. This dish is Trinidadian and Canadian meat. So I've got the black cod and I've got some pigeon peas. I love fish and I love it with fresh mango and cucumber chutney. This flavor right here. Looks like he's just about to start working on his noodles. He is, to me, almost the pasta master. He loves working with noodles, and the fact that he's using a guitar, which is a special little device, an Italian device to make those noodles, shows that he's very confident and comfortable that he can make a really great noodle. I think I'm being the right amount of ambitious doing these techniques for my entree because it's all calculated, and I know I can execute it. There's the scotch bonnet. <laughs> I love my scotch bonnet, okay? It's delicious, it's spicy, and it's got flavor, just like me. Oh, that smells good, Marita. You smell it up there? Yeah, girl. Marita, what you working on? I'm working on my cucumber chutney. They're all telling you it smells good. Yes, Chef. Sure does. It sure does, absolutely. I can smell the heat in that, too. It's got a good solid base. Looking great, Marita. Have you worked with black cod before? The good thing about the black cod, it is kind of forgiving. It's gonna I'm be I'm not so nice sure fish. about that myself. Because it is a white fish that is very flaky and become overcooked very quickly. And when it's overcooked, it is dry. And nobody wants to eat a dry piece no. of fish. Keep it nice and moist. Thank you. I have to make sure I cook that cod perfectly. Or else, I'm done like dinner. minutes. You have 30 minutes remaining. You're now at the halfway mark. The cooking of the lobster has to be perfect. Lobster is a family favorite, and I definitely can't let them down because I feel like I disappointed them in the lobster challenge before. How you doing, Eric? What do you have in here? A lot of herbs, uh, spices, uh, coriander, and grass. Your lobsters are chilling? How are they cooked? Are they medium rare right now? They're slightly under. Oh, look at that. How long did you cook these lobsters for? Uh, eight minutes, Chef. Eight minutes? Yeah. Chef Claude thinks I overcooked my lobster. I just have to push through and execute this lobster dish. I can't go home unless I'm Canada's first master chef. Yeah! Can I have some? <laughs> Looking good, Marita! I love that she's making the black cod in the taro leaf, too. So Marita's wrapping her fish and getting it ready to steam. She thinks it's a pretty forgiving fish. So that, to me, is a bit of a concern right now. You have 10 minutes left! 10 minutes! Woo! Eric already cooked his lobster almost to the edge. Now, if he stir fries that lobster on top of the poaching, I'm concerned it might be overcooked. Marita is definitely playing it safe, doing what she knows really well, which might be a very smart move, but only time will tell. One! I'm happy to get a real walk and just cook some Asian food. I'm back in my element, stir-frying these noodles. 30 seconds! Woo! Come on, Rita! Yes! Beautiful! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop! 
In tonight's second course of the MasterChef Canada finale, Marita has plated black cod and pigeon pea puree, while Eric has prepared egg noodles with poached lobster. Let's find out if they taste as good as they look. Please bring them to the banquet room. I hope they brought their passports, because we're going to Trinidad with this meal. The lobster has to be perfect, because I overcooked it last time. If I overcook it again, then what kind of redemption is that? Eric, please bring up your entree. It's uh, homemade egg noodles with uh, lobster sauce, aromatic spices, and then lime segments. Eric. You've learned how to cook lobster to a tea. The noodles are amazing. The sauce, not too creamy and over-the-top rich, but is subtle with flavor. It's a fine dish that I'd serve in a fine restaurant. Certainly one of mine. Thank you. It's impressive. Eric, by using the guitarra, you have the perfect, what we call the Shanghainese noodles. You know, you got that nice, smoky, burnt flavor. Here is when you're mixing East and the West together, and you do it right. Very, very smart. Thank you, chef. If you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook. I am really nervous. He's getting a lot of positive feedback. Marita, please bring up your entree. black cod steamed in a terra leaf with pigeon pea puree, a fresh mango chutney on top, and fresh cucumber sauce on the side. Maria, the pigeon pea puree, very nice. The tomato, sweet, concentrated, very strong flavor. The mango, bit of sugar you added to remove a little bit of the acidity. You have elevated this very simple dish from Trinidad. You've created a dish, in my opinion, that is a destination dish. A dish that people would travel for, which is a huge accomplishment. Thank you, chef. This piece of black cod, see how moist that is? How it glistens? That is exactly how to cook one of the most beautiful, delicate white fish that we serve in restaurants today. Thank you, chef. My big disappointment on the plate is the amount of fish. It doesn't resemble a full main course portion. Serving one piece of fish is disappointing. Everything else about the dish, spot on. Thank you, chef. Please go back to the kitchen and prepare for the desserts. Thank you, Thank you chef. chef. I'm super relieved because I got everything done to how I wanted, and that was my hardest round, I believe. Damn, I should have totally added another piece. Two stunning dishes, two very different tastes. Eric has learned how to cook a lobster. I don't think he just learned it, I think he mastered it. I mean, that was perfect. The fish was perfect as well. Marita's dish, the different flavors, the sweet, the sour, the salty, perfect dish. Eric really did take some risks there. His dish required more skill, I would say. This doesn't make things easy for us. It's going to be down to the dessert. Texture, not bad. But you know the comment about this looking like a ugly duckling? Yes, sir. It certainly is no swan. What happened? What caused this? Time management. Wow. That is raw. 15 minutes! Oh my god, Kayla. Dale and Kayla are still messing around, wrapping their fish. There's only 15 minutes left. What am I doing? Confidence. Yep. It's going in the oven now. It just looks awkward. Keep an eye on your salmon that's in the oven. 
The single most difficult challenge is the cooking of that fish because you can't see it, you can't touch it. It's encased in pastry. Is it browning? Very little. Danielle Salmon Wellington is beautiful. You have two minutes left, final two minutes. Yeah, I'll just leave it to the last 10 seconds. It's not enough time. How much time do we have? One minute, one minute. Come on, Julie. It's gonna be hot, so be careful. Oh, baby, I'll burn my hands, don't you worry. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Dale, wh what are you thinking? A puff pastry is not even cooked, and you're setting it on top of wet sauce? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Last five seconds, I go to squirt the sauce on top of the Wellington. Three, two, one, heads up! Good job. Way to, check it. Way to come back, Danielle. It looks like a big sauce turd. Fuck, 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 fuck. I'm going home. Kick everyone else's ass. It's time to taste your salmon wellingtons. Please bring them all down to the front. At this point, I'm only feeling about 60% confident that I have any chance in this competition. Dale, how do you think the salmon is going to look when I cut it through the center? Perfect, on the lighter side. It seems to be perfect on the lighter side. <laughs> but it's far from a perfect dish. The pastry, no color, barely cooked. The Swiss chard stalks and stems you wouldn't find in a sophisticated restaurant recipe. OK, chef. Thank you. A lot of chunky bits here. Rawish or light. Salmon on the raw side. The inside is delicious. Thank you, Chef. The bad part, though, is the pastry's raw. It's a real shame. Danielle, you seem very confident. All things considered, <laughs> I'm ecstatic that this is what I managed to get out. Let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. Look at that. Salmon cooked to perfection. Crispy pastry. Just the right season for the vegetable. Sauce, nice compliment. I don't know how you managed to do something so beautiful like that in an hour. I've never made a Wellington before, but I cook with fish a lot and I cook with pastry a lot, so. It's delicious. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. You say you've cooked a lot with fish? Yes. And a lot with pastry? Yes. Well, today you cooked a lot with passion, and it shows. Well done. Wow. I'd be out of business if I sold dishes that were this big. It's massive. When I'm eating Wellington, I'm looking for harmony. I'm looking for an exterior that's crispy and an inside that's cooked properly. Did you use the center cut or the tail cut of the fish? I can't remember now. The seasoning is just it's spot on. Thank you. Very nice. Good job, Julie. Good job, Julie.
aside from looking like a brick. Got the crust, nicely color, salmon, cooked fairly, and filling. Looks right. The proportion, I think it's just a little bit off, causing it to be a little bit dry. I still like it. How do you feel standing here now? Extremely nervous. Even though it looks like an ugly duckling, I think the flavors are going to be good. The salmon looks very nice. But that looks, taste is more important, right? Absolutely. Definitely undercooked pastry. Texture, not bad. But you know the comment about this looking like a ugly duckling? Yes, chef. It certainly is no swan. What happened? What caused this? Time management. Wow. That is raw. Such polar opposites. You nailed the inside. If you would have done a little bit better with the outside, you might have the top dish right now. That was truly an incredible pressure test. You all cooked valiantly, some more successfully than others. We need a moment to discuss who'll be going home. What do you think, Michael? This is going to be a very difficult decision. Uh, heavy and stodgy. But I thought inside was okay. The sauce was clunky, the inside was bland, the outside was raw. Very poor quality dish. One of them has got to be out. Please step forward, Danielle. Your salmon wellington looked beautiful, and its appearance was not deceiving. Take off your apron and please head upstairs. Thank you very much. The other dish, it was made by a home cook who has underperformed in this competition. Come on, Julie. But it looks like that's about to change. Julie? Congratulations. Please take off your apron and head upstairs. Thank you. My plan was to get Julie and Danielle, and now they're in the top, and it was a total fluke. Dale and Kayla, your performance was bad enough to send you both home. But there was one dish that was marginally more refined. Please step forward. Dale. I'm sorry, that dish did not belong to you. Kayla, you're safe. What? Thank you. Please remove your apron and head up to the gallery. Dale, we're excited to see where life takes you. Please make sure it involves food. It will. Because you are one fine cook. Come up here and shake hands. Congratulations, eh? You did a great job. You should be very proud. Luck. Thank you. I'm proud of how I've represented myself, and I'm actually blown away that I've made it this far in the competition. The standout dish was inventive and gutsy. This dish belongs to Dale. There we go, Captain. You, You've earned it. Go, go, go! Come on, guys! If you keep cooking like this, you'll be the one to beat. I have had the most amazing time ever. Woo! Woo! Good job, Dale. It's 
all I can give you, baby. Thank you, that's fine. The experiences I've got to go through and the places I've got to see has been a once in a lifetime experience and I would do it all over again if I could. Dale, who's going to be the first MasterChef Canada? Kayla's gonna kill them all. She's gonna come back and win it. Thank you, Gail. I'm gonna kill it, and um, I can't wait to see Dale. It's gonna be fantastic. I think it's safe to say that this is probably the riskiest thing anyone's done so far, to roast an entire squab on the bone in one hour and serve it perfectly cooked. Overall, very good job. It's time to find out what's under those boxes. Standing on my mystery box, and there is definitely a smell. I can't put my finger on it. One. It smells like dirty feet in here now. Two. <laughs> Three, lift. Oh. Awesome. What is that? In front of you is an array of raw ingredients. Some are exotic, and some may be more familiar, just like you'd find in the kitchens of any quality restaurant. But these ingredients are not just from any restaurant. They're from our restaurants. It's really cool to see what these chefs are inspired by. So my contribution to these boxes, taro, a basic staple in all Asia, just treat it like a potato. Kimchi, something spicy. Sea urchin, a treasure from the sea. It's something you either love or hate, and we love it. Oh, boy. They're in food, in case you haven't noticed. It stinks. It's the king of fruit in Asia. If you can use this, you will really impress me. Definitely gonna use a durian. Doesn't matter how much I hate it. I want to impress Chef Alvin. My restaurants feature the best seasonal ingredients from across the country. Yellowfoot chanterelle, found east coast and west coast. Cipollini onions, delicious sweet Italian onions. Quinoa, very healthy grain. Mostarda, a classic Italian fruit mustard from northern Italy. Squab, deliciously gamey. And just in case you didn't know, it's pigeon. I've eaten almost all these ingredients, except for the pickled cherry mustard thing. <laughs> I've given you monkfish, a robust fish that uh, can handle a lot of different flavors. White miso, fermented soybean, which is wonderful in soups and in dressings. And pork belly. You have 60 minutes to make us a restaurant quality dish. We'd be proud to serve. I hope we don't have to use all the ingredients. I'd be in trouble. Your 60 minutes starts now. Measuring cups. I'm either gonna work with the pork belly or the monkfish. I haven't really decided yet. Maybe some fried onions. I don't really know. No clue what I'm doing. Just throwing stuff in a pot. This is my favorite challenge so far because this takes a lot of uh, creativity, innovation to be able to create something that's gonna impress us. A lot of these home cooks is really gonna be intimidated by all these ingredients. Oh, for me, my advice. Simplify it, create a balanced dish. I would take the pork belly, marinate that in with the white miso and the durian. The dish I'm making is a stuffed squab with a uh, roast of cipollini onions. I'm totally gonna butcher him and he's gonna be looking pretty in about two minutes. I'm thinking about stuffing and roasting it. I'm not gonna be able to do that in an hour. The pitfall with using the squab, it is very, very lean. You need to build on those flavors of that squab. It's got a mild gaminess to it but the overcooking is the key for them. I am going to make pigeon soup or pigeon broth with some uh, Asian cell noodles and some mushrooms. I'm gonna be making a butter and pork pasted monkfish with a sea urchin velite. Now the pitfalls of monkfish is that if you overcook it, it gets very rubbery. So I would give it a really great sear on top, roast it in the oven, baste it with lots of butter, some herbs, and if you overcook that fish, it's over. You have 30 minutes to impress us with our ingredients. 
Hey, Carly, what are you making? Mushroom and onion stuffed flatbread. And then I'm going to um, miso poach the um, monkfish. Why is it there? Because I put it in too early. How much time do you think this is going to take to cook? That's a little rare in the middle. Like six to eight minutes. Probably closer to five. Uh, I can give you any advice. OK. That's the star of the show. Not the flatbread, all right? OK. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Rita, so tell me what you're cooking. Monkfish. What are the flavors in the pot? Mostly Asian inspired. I've got that garlic, the ponzu, a little bit of fish sauce, some miso. I even put in a piece of that kimchi in there for that spice. And you have an idea how it's all going to come together on the plate? It's in my head. Sounds like you've got a lot going on. I definitely do. Eric, what are you doing? I'm going to be pan searing some monkfish. This is a durian sauce that I made for the fish. It's actually quite salty. Yeah, how are you thinking that? Uh, it was just the jam and some of the fermented bean. Oh, I think it needs a little bit more durian. OK. But let me give you a word of wisdom. Being complex and being innovative is not the same thing. Hey, Tamara. Hi, chef. Fresh noodles, fresh yes, broth. Yes, chef. A pigeon broth. That's delicious. Thank you, chef. Incredible. It looks like you've been kind of flying under the radar. Is this your chance to really come out? This is exactly my chance to come out and yeah. shine. Very, very impressive so far. I love this. Tell me what you're doing. Chanterelle mushroom monkfish. And a sea urchin? Just made a broth with taro root and a little bit of fish sauce. So you use the taro root to thicken the broth? That's right. Oh, smart idea. Have you ever worked with sea urchin? No, I'm definitely taking a risk. I'm going to make like a, a soup with Whatever this is, it's said treat it like a potato. And I don't want to go towards the Italian ingredients, right? I want to try something different here. That's nice. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. Your final five minutes. Not a time to be in confusion. Now is the time to get ready. I'm shaking too bad. Wow, there's some very interesting looking dishes happening out there. Everyone's raising their game here. I think it's my yelling. <laughs> Tamara is making a soup with fresh cut noodles. Where's she getting noodles from? She made them. Oh, wow. She wants to win. Now, on the other hand, Carly's made flatbread with mushroom and miso monkfish on the side. And she doesn't look too sure about it, to be honest with you. Gala, a whole pigeon? That is ballsy. Kayla. One minute. Final minute. Come on. Kayla looks worried. Very worried. Why would she do that? They cut it open and it's bloody and it's still squawking. I will definitely not make a good impression. I want to see the finishing touches going on those plates. You need to be finishing them up. 30 seconds. Time to panic. After observing and tasting throughout the challenge, the judges will now take one final look before selecting the most promising dishes. I'm pretty confident. I think I'm going to be called up for sure. We asked you to make us a delicious dish with some superb and perhaps unfamiliar ingredients from our restaurants. There were some dishes that particularly impressed us. The first dish we'd like to taste was made by someone who has never won a mystery box challenge. I really, really need to win one of these mystery boxes. I need to go in that back room and see what that's all about. Please step forward. Tamara, bring your dish up here. My noodles turned out perfect, and the broth is super, so this dish is for the judges. Can you tell me a little about your dish, please? An Italian-Asian fusion dish with Italian noodles and Asian broth. The broth, I love the color, that rich golden brown. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. If I would change one thing on this dish, I would look for a little of that pigeon meat nestled under the noodles or in between that just popped out every once in a while. Very nicely done. Thank you. Looks very nice.
the richness and the city, the perfect balance. That to me, it's a very, very nice dish. Thank you, chef. The second home cook we'd like to see was clearly inspired by a difficult ingredient. That home cook is... Danielle. How do you feel about your dish? I feel like this is the strongest dish that I've brought up to you. Walk me through it, what is it? Brown butter basted monkfish served in a sea urchin velite, and I've topped it with chanterelle mushroom and a little bit of taro crisps for some crunch. It's very good. I'm talking like Alvin, my mouthful. <laughs> I like the acidity. The fish is cooked properly. It's a great dish. It's good to see you coming to the top now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. The next person we like to call forward is no stranger to the top spot. Please step forward. Marita. I've made a little bit of a glaze for the monkfish, and I have a sweet and spicy kimchi slaw on the bottom. Fish looks quite nice. Wow, that's a lot going on in my mouth. You got the fish nicely cooked. It goes nicely with the kimchi. And I'm glad you didn't over-season it because kimchi is very salty. That was smart, and I like it. It's good to see you thinking outside the box and your repertoire is growing. You continue to impress. Today, because the dishes were so good, we've decided to try four. I'm thinking, that's me. That's me for sure. I hope they're gonna call my name. The cook who made the fourth and final dish took a calculated risk, but it's gonna take a closer look to see if it paid off. Please step forward, Kayla. So I did a whole roasted squab, and then I made a jus with the pan drippings from the squab. What I'm most interested in is if the pigeon is cooked medium to medium rare. Well, let's see. It looks good. It looks nicely cooked. I'm salivating already. And surprisingly tender. The pigeon is outstanding. I think it's safe to say that this is probably the riskiest thing anyone's done so far. To roast an entire squab on the bone in one hour and serve it perfectly cooked. Overall, very good job. We need a moment to discuss. Nobody wants to win more than me, I guarantee you that. I don't wanna just be called up, I wanna win. Fantastic dishes, something that I would serve at various restaurants. All four did an incredible job. This is going to be a tough one. Four outstanding dishes, but only one can be the winner. The person who cooked the best dish, who will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge, that home cook is Danielle. Congratulations, Danielle. You're about to gain control of the competition. Baked Alaska, a majestic classic that when conquered is truly the mark of a master chef. What? I have no idea what it is. The base is a moist, airy layer of sponge cake brushed with the essence of a syrup or liqueur. The center of the dessert is a dome of rich ice cream. Surrounding the sponge and ice cream is thick, pillowy meringue, browned to perfection. Why don't you come up and take a look? I literally think it's a joke, because I don't even think it's possible. The trick to baked Alaska is making sure that whilst it's baking in a fiercely hot oven, that the ice cream doesn't melt. 
the meringue acts as an insulation. The right amount of thickness of that meringue is essential. Sponge, ice cream, and meringue married into one luxurious presentation. Please head to your stations. There you will find identical set of ingredients. You have 80 minutes to prepare, bake, and present an individual sized baked Alaska. Your time starts now. I'm very nervous. Just be calm, Kayla. Be calm, okay? Eric looks frazzled. No, I have no clue who's going home. Could be any of us. Calmest levels, all time low. Hate desserts, never had one of these before. This is an incredibly technically detailed dessert. There are three major components, the sponge, the ice cream, and a meringue that you want to get all over that dessert to insulate it, and then in a fiery hot oven. You have to make sure that all three elements work perfectly together. So the first step is make the ice cream, right? Agreed? They have to be doing it now. I'm most worried about ice cream. I've never made ice cream. I sure as hell have never baked ice cream. So worried? Yeah, I'm shitting my pants. Kayla? Hi. So I see you preparing some strawberries, so you're not sticking with a classic. Uh, no, I'm actually gonna do a riff on a Neapolitan ice cream. So I've done a chocolate sponge cake, a vanilla ice cream, and I'm gonna do a strawberry sauce. Well, I've never seen your hand tremble quite so much as it is today, so I'm gonna leave you with that and Thank make sure you. that you uh, watch the time. You only have 45 minutes left. Danielle, how you doing? Good, how are you? What do you have in there? It's gonna be a maple pistachio ice cream. Okay. And then I'm gonna be brushing the sponge cake with a little bit of maple whiskey sauce. You sure you're not taking a little bit of a risk there? I'm definitely taking a risk, but uh, it's Master Chef Canada Kitchen. It's time to start taking risks. Who's going home today? <sighs> it's definitely not going to be me. Really? Absolutely not. Your ice cream should be in the by now, so it'll freeze up solid. I've made sponge cake a few times, so I am feeling pretty good. Okay, guys, that sponge cake needs to be in the oven. Go, 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 get it in there. I'm a little bit worried. Maybe this won't bake in time. I'm mixing the batter and I start folding in flour. Julie? Hi. Baked Alaska challenge, gotta be the toughest yet. Are you confident that you can pull all that off? Yeah. Looks like the flour is a little undermixed there. I would take that out with a spoon so you don't get that uh, raw flour flavor. Thank you. I think Julie is having a meltdown. I just came off Julie's station. She was taking her Genovese sponge, pouring it into the sheet pan, and the flour that is in there that is unmixed, I said to her, take it out, remix it so it mixes through nicely. She didn't take that advice. She just takes her spatula and mixes it through, throws it into the oven. If we find uncooked flour in that sponge cake, it could be the end. Why wouldn't you take your advice at this stage of the game? 30 minutes. You only have 30 minutes left. Your last 30 minutes. I open the oven and I pull out the cake and it's not servable. I can see that there's too much moisture in the cake. It's raw. Is it? It's raw. I see Danielle and she threw her cake in the garbage. And I think, what are you doing? Uh, my sponge cake flopped. My eggs, I don't know if I under whipped them or over whipped them, but starting over. If my second sponge cake doesn't work, it's over. I am praying for an absolute miracle. I start to mold my sponge cake, and it's mushy. It is brown globs of goo. Trying to salvage it and put it in a ring mold and cross my fingers. I pull out my second sponge cake. Oh, fuck me. And it's just as bad as first. I'm absolutely ticked. I have no time to make a third sponge cake. I have to use it. Danielle's having a problem with her cake, too. And I'm thinking, maybe hers will be worse than mine. 10 minutes, you only have 10 minutes left. Come on, your meringue should be going by now. On the meringue, not the easiest of things to make. Separating those egg yolks from the white, making sure there's no contamination, because if you get a bit of that egg yolk into it, it is not gonna become light and fluffy. Adding the right amount of sugar and then beating it so it is nice and stiff and easy to work with. That's the key, it has to be stiff mm -hmm. so that it creates an insulation around that ice cream. Time to put my meringue on my cake so I can start throwing it on. <laughs> it looked like abstract art. I'm pretty good at culinary engineering. Uh, when it comes to constructing things, you pretty much have to slop a bunch of meringue on and just even it out, smooth it out, and take a spoon and start dolloping to get those nice peaks. 
You have five minutes. Start picking your Alaska. When I put it in the oven, I'm actually a little bit proud that I've actually pulled this off. My ice cream is solid. And my meringue is perfect. I put my baked Alaska in the oven. I feel like I have a little bit of help. Everyone's doing awesome, but Kayla is behind everybody. A little bit worried about Kayla right now. She's got to get her baked Alaska in the oven. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Kayla's got the torch going. That's probably a smart idea. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough time, just fucking sear it. That's what I would do. Yeah, so my meringue isn't crisping up as much as I would like it to, so I'm just going to blow towards the top of it really quickly. Don't know what it will do to the meringue, but it looks pretty. Nice. Very smart, Kayla. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up. Great job. Great job, guys. Great job. Great job. Time is up, and I'm definitely worried. My baked Alaska look like an igloo, but a really ugly igloo. Please bring your baked Alaskas up to the front to be tasted. Compared to the beginning, I definitely thought I was going home. Taking out my baked Alaska, I think I have a pretty good chance of winning this. I know inside this meringue, my ice cream is soft. Right now, I'm not hoping to be the best. I'm hoping somebody screwed up more than I did. Now the judges will taste each baked Alaska and decide which cooks stay and which cooks will leave the Master Chef Canada kitchen once and for all. Eric. Hello, Chef. I tell ya, cuts beautifully. Sponge, nice and fluffy. Meringue, nicely crisp. That cake, to me, is beautiful. You tell me you cannot make dessert, eh? That doesn't say it. You tend to underrate yourself. Sometimes, you have to pat yourself on the back. Hey, Chef. Eric. Chef. Mm. It is very good. Thank you, Chef. Danielle. Chef, this is a maple pistachio baked Alaska. Ice cream was a little soft. Yeah. The sponge is a little disappointing. Yeah. Ice cream was soft. Yeah, it was. I'm guessing it's because of the insulation of the sponge below that made the ice cream melt on you. Thank you. Wow. Not your finest work? Definitely not. I want this bad. I do not want to go home on a stupid dessert. <sighs> this is intense, man. Hi, Julie. Hi. You think you honored a classic? I did. Some nice layers happening here. A sponge cake, right in the bottom. It looks a little grainy. Mm. Did you incorporate all the flour? I tried to. Because it looks like there's raw flour in here. Wow. I've never seen a baked Alaska with raw flour. That might be very costly for you. Yes, I know that. Julie. Hi. Looks like the loading of the meringue got a little carried away there, huh? Yeah. Good success on the ice cream, though, by the looks of it. I had mentioned to you about the yes, you did. flour in the sponge. Listen, the texture of the meringue is good, the ice cream is good. Not listening to Chef Michael could send me home. Nice three layers. Thank you. What's the flavor of the sponge on the bottom? Uh, the flavor of the sponge is chocolate. Were you happy with the way the sponge turned out? Uh, it was a little bit fudgy. Oh, more than spongy, but the flavor is really good. You're right. It's it's fudgy. Yes, chef. Almost 
like a brownie, if you wish. Thank you. I saw you using a bowtorch. Where did you learn that trick from? I just wanted to get a little bit darker. I thought it would be a good idea. Well, it was a good idea. It definitely got it darker. It's different. Where is the sponge cake? That brown thing? Look at that. It doesn't look very peeling, does it? No, Chef. Flavor's nice. Took some risks here. And unfortunately, some of them don't pay off too well. Yes, yeah, Chef. I don't get much lobster roll where I come from. I don't know the difference between a soft bun and a hard bun, but I sit on a hard bun every day. <laughs> so that was a good one, Chef. Feeling good about lobster, not feeling good about time. It's very easy to overcook. I want to make sure I don't do that today. I'm really interested in seeing how Tamara pulls her dish together. So far, in her basket, I saw white asparagus, green asparagus, fennel. I saw mangoes. Bloody hell, Love I don't that. know what she's doing. Tamara. Hi, Chef. So you've picked out lots of ingredients from the pantry, keeping your options open? Yes, Chef. So what are you preparing? I am doing a Caribbean Asian fusion with a little bit of curry and butter poached lobster. Any concerns with the delicate flavors of the lobster, using curry, how big and robust it can be? Yes, Chef. I'm just using curry as an accent. I'm not actually currying anything. So a subtle background. You got it, Chef. Thank you. I'm making a very simple lobster risotto. So I really want to showcase the flavor of the lobster and uh, make sure the judges love it. Eric. Hello, Chef. What are you doing? Poaching the lobster in butter? I'm cooking a lobster risotto. Anything in there in terms of aromatics? I'm going to put most of the aromatics in my stock. So you're going to make a quick stock? You think you'll have enough time? Because uh, that flavor of that lobster is key yes. to success. It better be good. Yes, Chef. Mike, how are yeah, you doing? Doing all right, Chef. Okay, how long have you cooked that for? That was uh, just 10 minutes right on the dot. What do you think? Is it going to be just right? I think it's going to be just right. Well, I hope so. What are you doing anyway? Just kind of like a little deconstructed lobster roll. Deconstructed, I like well, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm just making the garlicky croutons over here. I'm doing a little smoked paprika corn. And then I have just made my own aioli. Are you going to do anything with that lovely tamale, you know? Yeah, that's going to go in my aioli. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, this sounds great. Let's hope it tastes good, eh? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Julie, hi. So what other flavors are you going to be putting into the dish? There's going to be bacon, corn. And we'll be able to taste the flavors of the lobster through all of that? Mm, no idea. And are you removing the meat from the shell afterwards, or are you serving it in the shell? I'm going to try and do the knuckles out of the shell if I can get the milk. The knuckles and the claws, the sweetest part. I've never done this before, so I'm going to try. Good luck. Oh, my god. Hey, Marita. Hi, Chef. Why a ravioli? I haven't showcased my Italian side yet. That's an ambitious dish. It's a big risk you're taking. What do you have in here? That's my filling. What's inside of here? Fresh herbs, parsley, chives, a little bit of ricotta, lemon zest, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. It tastes a lobster. Very nice. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. I don't even know which way to put this in. This way? Mm. We'll say that's right. No idea. I'm feeling really good about my stock. The lobster flavor is definitely coming through. As long as time is on my side, I have a good chance of being up there today. Fingers crossed. Pino. You know, chef. What are you doing? I'm making a lobster risotto, chef. Do you realize you have two other risotto that we're going to compare it with? What's in there? That's just veggie stock, chef. Is that your normal recipe? Usually, if I had time, I'd make stock out of the lobster shell. I'd but make why stock. pick a risotto when you know you don't have time to make a proper stock? Well, I'm going to actually add some lobster inside my risotto right before it's cooked. I think it needs a lot more flavors, or else it's going to taste like lobster Chef, on a vegetable a risotto. Just when I think I know what I'm doing, I get thrown down. I'm worried about my risotto not being perfect. That's what I'm worried about. Ten minutes left. What? Ten minutes remaining in the cook. I am worried. My saving grace is that it only takes a couple minutes to cook. I hope it pays off. I'm getting a little worried. I still have to cook it for a while. 
He's got a ways to go. I'm shocked. Three risottos. I think Pino's in trouble. He's cooking risotto with a vegetable stock. You should fully utilize all the lobster, all the flavors. That's what Eric has done. He's got yeah. all the shells, the yes. innards from the head, which are your favorite part. Yeah. And I think he's going to do quite well in it. Well, Mike is being more innovative. He's doing deconstruction, something that's not so boring. Maybe he can pull it off. I can't think of a better time than being in the top seven to step it up. Five minutes. Perfect. If I'm having a hard time, so is everybody else, because I know I move a lot faster than everybody. You have two minutes left. What do I crack this thing with? <laughs> Julie's just starting to peel her lobster. See that? Michael said the knuckles are the sweetest part of the lobster, but they are really, really difficult to get out. I don't think she knows how to remove it off the shell. It's harder when you're shaking. This is like panic mode. One minute. One minute left. Come on, guys. Push, push, push. I'm running out of time. Can get the knuckles out. I'm not sure what the judges are going to say about this. Yeah, my risotto's done. I should be able to pull this off. Come on, play. Dig deep, you can do this. Almost there. Ten seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, stop cooking. That was tough. The judges will take a final look at the home cook's dishes and select the three most promising to taste. There were three dishes that stood out, and we want to take a closer look. One of these cooks will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. The first dish demonstrates that sometimes simple is best. What's more simple than like lobster aioli and garlic toast? The lobster was the star ingredient. My lobster was cooked perfectly. Right now I'm holding double aces. And seems to be perfectly cooked. I have two claws cooked to perfection. My dish looks stunning. Please step forward. Mike. I think of all the home cooks here, Mike has the biggest knowledge of food. He could definitely be a big threat. It's just a little take on a lobster roll. Garlicky crustini underneath. The lobster was simply boiled in salty water. I've got some smoked paprika corn and just a bit of sauteed capers. And then there's an aioli made with the tamale. I like the balance between corn and the capers and the lobster is not disguised. I love lobster rolls because they're soft and tender, and the bread here is very crispy, but I do appreciate the fact that you were creative with a very common luxury ingredient. So, good job. Thank you, Chef. I don't get much lobster roll where I come from. I don't know the difference between a soft bun and a hard bun, but I sit on a hard bun every day. <laughs> so that was a good one, Chef. Fantastic, very nice. The lobster, that's done to perfection. And of course, the tamale gives it that extra crustacean, that extra flavor. Very, very tasty one. All right. Thank you, Chef. Top seven, and they're loving this dish. I feel pretty good. The next dish that we want to see is also on the light and simple side. I've got my fingers crossed that mine will stand out. I think they're talking about me. Please step forward. Tamara. Tell me about your dish. A butter poached lobster with Thai mango slaw, with fresh peas and some red onion and some celery leaf. If you overcook a lobster, it is tough, it is rubbery. This should be moist, succulent, tender. If cooked, just to the point. Do you think it's cooked to the point? Yes, Chef. It doesn't. 
disappointing. Thank you, Chef. The mango, the pink grapefruit, the shredded sugar snap peas, crisp, citrus, refreshing. Simple, but very tasty. Thank you, Chef. Every time you go in the pantry, you have two baskets with you. I like to see you have one basket and plan it out and focus a little bit more. The lobster is perfect. You could have just had this on a plate to basically show us how well you cook lobster. Thank you, Chef. Four of you decided to go Italian on your lobster today. I definitely want these judges to taste and know that I can cook more than Asian food. One of those dishes stood out. Come on. I really think this is one of my best dishes. I'm hoping they see that I took a risk. To get this advantage is huge. It was made by... Eric. Nothing against Eric, but I really wanted to be called up there. I use the body and the shells to make my stock, and I only use the tail, claw, and knuckle meat in my risotto. There's some carini mushrooms, Parmesan cheese. The rice, I think, has all the characteristics of an outstanding risotto. You used the shells and increased the flavors by various aromatics. You can taste a lobster in it, and that's the key with risotto. Very good. How does that look to you? Slightly overcooked, Chef. I would say slightly overcooked. I tried butter poaching it for the first time, Chef. Okay. It's a bad mistake. But I must say, the risotto is perfect and it's delicious. Very nice. Thank you, Chef. Please give us a moment to discuss. Rest Amazingly cooked lobster. It added that crisp texture. Oh. I would agree. Congrats, Tamara. <laughs> yeah, right. Congrats, Mike. The dish that we thought showed the most skill, the best execution, and the best flavor was cooked by... Mike. Oh, nice job, Mike. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you. So I guess making it simple has paid off for you. Less is more. Uh, yeah, for sure. Feeling good. Today, your inspiration comes from a bakery. It's an edible icon for many Canadians, a symbol of our sweet patriotism. It's a breakfast classic and a decadent snack. And we'll show you 12 good reasons why it deserves to be the star of this pressure test. A dozen donuts. Look at how good those look. Donuts are actually like super hard to make. They're super technical, even though it just seems like the trashy dessert, right? They are made with a light, airy, yeast-based dough with a signature hole in the middle or filled with something delicious. In this pressure test, you will make a dozen perfect donuts and serve them in a bakery box. Your box must include at least three different types of donuts. Who's gonna fly too close to the sun and make four? Eric. We want to see donuts that are perfectly risen, delicately fried, and finished with different glazes of your own invention. Oh. All the ingredients you require will be waiting for you at your stations. You will also have access to a specialty pantry where you can choose the ingredients that will flavor your donut fillings and glazes. You'll be given 60 minutes. Use your time wisely. I'm definitely terrified that is donuts. I really, really hate baking. Chef, first pressure test. Yes, How are you chef. feeling? Uh, under pressure. Under pressure. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Chef, I'm gonna make a peanut butter and jelly donut inspired by the classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm gonna make a s'mores inspired donut, and I'm gonna make an Italian style donut. Classic, not very exotic. I'm taking the classics into considerations here and making something out of that, so that's imaginative, I believe. How confident are you? Scale one to 10. Seven, Chef. Seven. That's enough to put me through, because my scale is uh, pretty high. Eric, walk me through your donuts. How many donuts are you making? I'm gonna do eight different kinds. Eight different kinds? Yeah. 
I'm not just gonna do three because I never wanna do the minimum. It seems too easy. Give me a bacon one, a coconut one, cinnamon sugar, vanilla one, play on a mole, chocolate and spicy, citrus one, blueberry jelly filled one, and uh, candied walnuts. So what's your backup plan? <laughs> Eric's strategy, it's not even a strategy. You can already screw up three. Why would you screw up eight? Eight's good luck for a Chinese. Eight though, well, that concerns me. It should concern you too. Is he doing like a creme anglaise too? Yeah. Like what was he doing with the milk? I'm just doing a creme anglaise. Yeah. 30 minutes up, you have 30 minutes left. I would recommend that you take a look at your donuts and make sure they're proofing nicely. Look how flat they look. Let's make this work. My money right now is on Marita. I think Marita cooking her donuts now is a good strategy. Now Definitely she can that. then focus on just the toppings and the fillings only. Eric is doing eight different varieties. What, eight? He doesn't think the pressure test is tough enough already. With having to make three donuts, he's making it more difficult for himself. We got a creme anglaise, he's got a blueberry sauce. He's got something burning. Yeah. I definitely could be going home today. It's really ambitious what I'm trying to do. If he pulls this off, I'm gonna be incredibly surprised. I'm so excited to see Eric all over the place. He could help me move further in this competition if he messes up. One minute left. One minute. Start boxing your donuts. Yeah. Eric's not gonna make it. Think quick. <laughs> Please bring your box up to the front. Okay, let's open this up. Wow. These look perfect. You're married to a policeman, right? <laughs> okay, tell me what we have here first. I've got a vanilla brulee, a strawberry lemonade, and a fairy coconut donut. First do the coconut, because I love coconut. Love it. I can taste all the components. The glaze is just perfect. That, to me, is a very coconut donut. Thank you, Chef. There you go. Hi, Chef. These look beautiful. Thank you, Chef. Little jewels in a box. Let me try the strawberry lemonade. Sounds wonderful. That hint of lemon. It always makes that fruit come alive. And that's exactly what happens with this donut. Thank you, Chef. That strawberry is up front. That lemon is a second flavor. You are the donut diva today. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Wow, Marita's donuts were stunning. They were beautiful. They look like they came from a shop. Hmm, what's in this box? Did you stick with the plan to make eight, or did you take my advice and do three? There could be a variety of eight in there. So these two are my bacon donuts, drunken nuts, cinnamon sugar donut, candied peppers with a chocolate glaze, blueberry glazed donut. Looks like there's a couple of hits and a couple of misses. This is the bourbon and walnut? Yeah. Classic combination. I like this one. Thank you, Chef. Nice texture. The flavors make sense to me. So what is this? There's a bacon glaze with a candied bacon on top. Mm. Nice texture. Thank you. I'm not too sure about this fat. Did you eat this? I did. You like it? I do. I don't. Well, eight means wealth in Chinese. Yeah. But it also means greed. And when you get too greedy, I can tell you what can happen. You can get a big fat zero. So remember that. Yes, sure. Okay. Well, my favorite has always been sugar donut. Nice and plump, soft. 
This looks good. You know, I don't like my donut too sweet. But this one, it's just right. It's not too sweet. Nice texture. Beautiful. Now, don't you wish all 12 of your donuts were these? Yes, chef. I'm not by any means happy with this final dozen donuts. It just looks like I'm an idiot because I tried doing eight donuts and Chef even warned me I shouldn't have done eight. Chef Michael. Well, at first glance, I notice how irregular they are. I find that a little disappointing that, you know, we've got a, a large one, a very small one. Yes, yeah, Chef, I wanted to have smaller and bigger donuts. Why would you want to do something like that? Well, sometimes you want two, because I know when I eat donuts, Chef, I eat two or three. Really? These donuts should be the same size. Yes, Chef. Tell me the flavors you have in your donuts, please. A cream-filled donut with sour cherry on top, Chef. S'mores-inspired donut with graham crackers, chocolate ganache, and a marshmallow. This one here? Peanut butter and jam-inspired donut. No jam. Did I make it through? Are you sure you put jam in there? I'm positive, Chef. It seemed like it went in there. Let's try again. I hope that one's better. There we go. You've got jam in this one. I do. It's unsweet. It's almost sort of flat in flavor. OK. But I do feel that there's a little error in the dough, and I think something went a little awry here. That's fair, Chef. Thank, Thank you. you. What's the flavor here that I'm looking for? What, what exactly did you want to achieve with this donut? I wanted that nice cream to come through, Chef. And I wanted to get a little bit of that sourness from the sour cherry on there, Chef. This one's delicious. Thank you, Chef. What happened with the yeast? It looks like it didn't, didn't activate here. Try that. Hmm. What do you think? It's a little doughy. It's very dry. Thank you. It was a bad idea. I should have just made them all the same size. You all brought your best to this pressure test. But unfortunately, one of you will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. We need a moment to discuss. That was one of the worst donuts you've ever had, too. That's right? one of the worst donuts I ever had. We were able to find some good ones in there, but there were also some duds. On the other hand, very interesting when you lift the lid. Uh, you want to know what they are, but you wouldn't want to eat them all. Three dozen donuts, three very different outcomes. And one of those outcomes was so outstanding that it has secured this home cook a place in the top five. Please step forward. Marita. Congratulations. Please take your apron off and head up to the gallery. I'm in the top five. I'm so happy. Mama's proud. Pino and Eric, this is a very hard decision. Both your donuts had extraordinary qualities. Pino, your flavor profiles were whimsical and inviting. And while the presentation was not uniform, it was pretty and tempting. Eric, your donuts were inventive but sloppy. You attempted too many flavors. Here's the thing about the donuts. Food should always look good. But at the end of the day, most important thing is taste. And the donuts that tasted the best belong to... Eric. Go join the other finalists on the gallery. Thank you, chefs. It's okay. It's very thick. 
You could even pour the Bernays sauce out. It's not uh, Bernays sauce, it's Bernays mayonnaise. It would really suck if I just went home and disappointed my family. I hope it tastes better than it looks. Me too, chef. I am taking the biggest breath. I think I have a good chance to win this challenge. The home cooks are racing to finish a classic bistro dish, steak frites with Bernays sauce. The person with the weakest dish will be going home. Final two minutes, you should be plating. There's only three components on the plate. They all have to be perfect. Everything has to kind of come together in harmony in order to be a delicious experience. Otherwise, you're gonna have cold frites, hot steak, Bernays sauce, which is thick and gloopy. You don't want that. up and I'm like yes got it all down it was really close to get those fries down but I'm actually feeling pretty good about it I have no idea how my steak is cooked on the inside it could be raw it could be overcooked I'm not overly confident right now I don't know if I've done enough to make it to the top four I finished everything my sauce tastes great my fries are perfect and I believe my steaks are perfect oh. medium rare I can't go I really can't it's time to taste your steak frite and find out who will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen please bring your plates to the front Kayla, we asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, medium rare. What am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Um, nice and crisp on the outside and a beautiful medium rare on the inside. You're confident of that? Never too confident. It certainly is a little darker on the outside than I might expect. Okay. That is a nicely cooked medium rare steak. Yes. See it quite nicely. It's a little dark in some areas, which would lead me to believe maybe the pan was a little too hot. Yes, Chef. But the cook is perfect medium rare. The difference of color from the searing from the outside edge mm -hmm. to a richer, deeper pink as it moves to the center. Beautiful. Thank you, Chef. It's very, very good. The seasoning is spot on also. Thank you, Chef. I was very concerned that you were putting too much on. Kayla. Hi, Chef. You happy? Um, I'm very happy with my steak and my Bernays. These uh, french fries? Try one. What do you think? I think they're cooked. I think they need more color on the outside, though. I definitely agree with you that it needs a lot more sun, I think. Looking at my fries, all I'm thinking is, where is my purse? I need my bronzer right now. These fries are pasty. I would pay for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's delicious. Much. It's well balanced, great acidity. How did you master a Bernays in one hour? You made it before? Uh, third time's a charm. Uh, this is my, my third time, but I, um, I, I eat a lot of it, so I know what it's supposed to taste like. It took me hundreds of times to master the basic, humble hollandaise sauce, which is the mother of this sauce. And you've done that three times. Thank you, Chef. Had you nailed the fries, you'd probably have one of the best steak frites with Bernays that I've ever had. It's so close. Yes, Chef. So, Eric, what am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Perfect medium rare, chef. That's pretty confident. Glistening, beautiful, very nice. Thank you, chef. A nice sear on the steak on the outside and all the way around. See the color differences around the edge as it comes to the center. It is much darker and richer pink. Perfect. Thank you, chef. Very nicely seasoned. That's about as good as it gets on a steak. Eric, looks very impressive. If that came to me in the restaurant, I would be a happy man. Thank you, chef. French fries, that's nice. That's consistency, that's uniform. But then we're the crispy expert, right? Yes, chef. I can basically almost, you know, hear the crunch. I would give this a very good pass. Thank you, chef. Maybe a bit more. 
You know, when this dish is made properly, it has complete harmony. There's nowhere to hide, though, here. We're talking about fries, steak, and a sauce. What happened here? I don't know, chef. It's very thick. You couldn't even pour the Bernays sauce out. It's not uh, Bernays sauce, it's Bernays mayonnaise. It would really suck if I just went home and disappointed my family. I hope it tastes better than it looks. Me too, chef. I am taking the biggest breath. I think I have a good chance to win this challenge. At this point, I'm thinking my sauce could definitely send me home. <sighs> Mike? Boy, hey, chef. We asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, yeah. medium rare. Is that what I'm going to find when I cut into the steak? I sure hope so, chef. Oh, God. It's blue. As soon as Michael cut into that, I'm like, I'm going home for sure. That is not medium rare. No. Mike's steak is still moving. It's really tough. But Mike could be going home on a blue steak. Fuck. I just didn't get the sear I needed on it before I got in the oven there. You were the only one that took it to the oven? Uh, yeah. Do you think it was in the oven and out of, uh, out of your mind? No, usually, like, if I get a good sear in a skillet and five minutes in the oven at 325 will usually do it right for me, but I just didn't have the residual heat going into the oven. Nicely seasoned, though. Thank you. Very nicely seasoned. Are you happy with the result? I'm really kicking myself over that steak. I would be, too. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Hello, Chef. French fries? What do you think about them? Uh, there's a bit of a couple uneven cuts there, Chef. It would have been nice if I had a moment to definitely pick out some of the a couple larger scragglers got in there. But French fries taste pretty good. Crispy, soft, right consistency, nice size. Chef. How are you? I had better afternoons, for sure. That blue steak, there's no excuse. That cow's still mooing. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's not a perfect medium rare, but it is a perfect rare, which is not a bad thing for some people who like rare meat. The Bernays now. Nice consistency. Thank you, Chef. I like the shine to it. It's beautiful. This looks pretty textbook. I made a few Bernays in my time. Well, I like the way it coats the back of the spoon, which is one of the tests for all apprentices when they make a Bernays, and it coats it beautifully. How does it taste? It's delicious. Thank you, Chef. Everyone worked hard to deliver in this challenge. Unfortunately, we have to send at least one of you home. We need a moment to discuss. There's definitely some high points, but there's unfortunately a few, a few low points there. We got one really bad steak, yep. and one really bad french fry, and one really bad sauce, so... Uh... Everyone had two to three elements perfectly done. Right now, I feel so sick. It's anyone's game at this point. It really is. Bernays is the most difficult yeah. component yeah. on that dish. Yeah, but... It was like wallpaper paste. Yeah. This is going to be yeah, very tricky, cool. guys. So we know what we have to do. This classic bistro dish had three challenging elements. We were looking for a flawless medium rare steak, perfect crispy fries, and a velvety Bernays. All of you nailed at least one component of the dish, and one of you nailed most of it. That person was... Kayla. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Your steak and perfect Bernays gave you the edge. Please take off your apron and join the other top four finalists in the gallery. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good job. Mike and Eric, your plates were a little less consistent. Mike, your steak was undercooked. But your fries were decent and your bernays beautiful. Thank you. Glossy and perfectly balanced. Eric, your fries were the best of the bunch. Your sauce was the worst and your steak was cooked perfectly to order. While every element of steak frites is important, the steak is the jewel in the crown. And I think you both know what that means. For sure, Sean. Mike, you're going home today because of your steak. Yeah, for sure. Get on, bud. Eric, 
head upstairs. You're a top four finalist of MasterChef Canada. Congratulations. Thank you, chefs. Feels good to make it this far, but top four still is enough. This mystery box is definitely a game changer. It's our biggest and most intimidating mystery box yet. Joe Bastianich. Hi, guys. An idol of mine. I'm super intimidated to cook for him. Pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. He's poised. He's elegant. I think I'm a starstruck. For the toughest mystery box challenge yet, we've invited the toughest judge from MasterChef US. You have made it to the final four of MasterChef Canada. And that is a testament to your ability to cook great food and to partake in one of the greatest culinary challenges in the entire world. So congratulations to you all. Joe came out of the big mystery box. Now it's time to find out what's in yours. One. Two. Three. Lift. Everything contained in your mystery box has been handpicked by me. I've given you the king of all Italian cheeses, Grano Padano. Tender veal, calamari, pork sausage, and pancetta, fresh burrata, and from my vineyard, a wine I make myself in northeastern Italy called Vespa Bianco. That's for cooking, not drinking. These ingredients are like top dog ingredients, like best of the best. Very Italian. Simple, but they have to be done the right way. Whoever wins this mystery box will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. You have 60 minutes to cook something Italian-inspired. Impress Joe Bastianich. Hi, Marita. Hi, Chef. So what are you making? Mediterranean stew mm -hmm. with calamari, and I'm going to do a roti, Trinidadian bread. A roti? Are mm -hmm. you from Trinidad? I am from Trinidad, yes, wow. Chef. I hope that I can impress you today with a little Trinidadian Italian fusion. Do I want fusion, or do I want, like, pure Italian food? Like... I think you want to see a little bit of us. An important mystery box. Someone's going home as well. You were number one or you number four? I would like to say that I'm number one. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. All right, Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you, Chef? Today I'm gonna try and go a little more simple. I don't want to be super chaotic in front of Joe. What's in the tomato sauce? Just the tomatoes? Just the sunrise on the tomatoes? No, I'm gonna, I have the infused flavor from the sausage. Uh-huh. And you're gonna put the garlic. Is there a vampire convention happening? You're gonna saute the onion and all that pork fat? Yes. A little heavy, no? Everything I was doing for my sauce, you question. You're gonna put some wine in it? It's too late now. Never too late, my friend. Fuck that. I think Eric's gonna have a problem with keeping it simple, and I think that he's gonna go home. Okay, Tamara, what do you got going on? What are you gonna make? Uh, I'm going to do uh, veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel. Chef, I do fusion. You do fusion? Yes, chef. Fusion without confusion? Yeah, absolutely, chef. Where's your veal loin? Hopefully that's cooking already. In about five minutes, I'm gonna put it on. So you haven't started cooking the veal, the veal loin yet? No, chef. I'm from Alberta, so I'm very familiar with proteins. I think that's definitely one of my strong points. I'm a very positive person, but, you know, one dish will send you home. Good luck. Hi, Kayla. So what are you making? I'm making a stuffed veal loin. Stuffed with what? The Parmesan cheese, burrata, basil, some rendered down pancetta, and a little bit of chili flakes. Where's your veal loin? Did you, it's, did you I stuff just it popped it in the oven, yeah. It's, it's in stuffed, the oven? it's in, in the oven. I butter basted it. Very Frenchy, very fancy. You think Italian food, you think simple. All of a sudden, you're like butterflying a veal loin and filling it and stuffing it. it seems very ambitious. You know, I just really want to impress you. Somebody's going home. And there's only four of us. I mean, those odds aren't good. At the end of the day, that veal has to deliver. Absolutely, Chef. You can talk the talk. I hope you can walk the walk. Who's going home today? Eric. Ten minutes remaining. So some very interesting things happening out there. At this point, I think Kayla, if she could pull off the stuffed veal, and if it's still pink and moist in the middle, that would be very impressive, but very, very, very ambitious. I'm really interested in trying Marita's roti. She's frying it off in a little skillet pan right there, and uh, by the look on her face, she seemed to be quite pleased with it so far. Eric, who's gone the traditional route, I think he's a little bit confused of what Italian, simple Italian pasta means. Like, I've seen a lot of raw garlic. 
You have just one minute left. Worried about overcooking the calamari. It's my biggest concern. I need to make sure that that calamari is cooked perfectly, because if I don't, I may be leaving the Master Chef Canada kitchen. Last touches. Want to see good-looking plates? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Hands in the air, everybody. Good job. There's always a chance in top four to go home, and I took a risk. I hope it paid off. I kept it simple today. I don't want to seem very frantic in front of Joe. He doesn't know I'm, like, crazy yet, so... I don't usually cook Italian. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that it was cooked well. You never know. The first dish we would like to try is you, Marita. Please bring your dish up. Everything's riding on the calamari. I am so nervous. OK, Marita, tell me about the dish. I did a Mediterranean calamari stew, a little bit of capas, and a roti with olives and fresh parsley. The calamari is cooked perfectly. Still very, very moist, very delicate. The tomato stew has very nice, fresh flavors. You taste the olives, you taste the onions, you taste garlic, a lot of garlic for me. It's a very, very good expression of ingredients. And I think, quite frankly, it comes together really, really strong. Good job. Thank you. Well, the dish looks beautiful. Thank you, chef. I think you've honored Italian ingredients really well here. I like the fact that you added something that's from you, which is the roti. Very strong dish. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I am so relieved that it's cooked right. Eric, please bring your dish up. Pasta and tomato sauce could seem too simple and underwhelming, and it could definitely send me home. Tell me about the dish. It's homemade fettuccine, sausage, and crushed tomato sauce topped with basil. It's pretty simple, though. Did you want to stay simple, or were you trying to impress? Um, I usually overcomplicate things. Today, I thought I'd stick with clean flavors. It does kind of come together as a pasta dish. It has good flavor. Try it. What do you think? Say you were in my restaurant. What would you pay for that? $15. $15? $20. Are you overvaluing yourself? Uh, let's see what they say. I'm really happy this time you kept it simple. Yes, Chef. But if you're going to charge 20 bucks for that pasta, that pasta better be right on. And I mean from the sauce to the noodle. Texture, consistency, you hit it right on. I would say it's a very nice dish. Thank you. Kayla, could you please come with your dish? This dish could either shoot me up into top three, or it could send me home. Tell me about your dish. Stuffed veal loin with cheese, olive tapenade, crispy fried capers. Very tricky to get a stuffed veal loin. Perfect. How did you want to cook it? Medium rare, medium? Uh, medium. 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 Yeah. Let's see. Not bad. It's a medium, true medium. So you nailed the temperature. You were able to get a nice seasoned crust on the outside. The filling, I take it or leave it. The pinkness of the veal in the center is spot on. And it's moist and tender and really quite flavorful. You think you made any mistakes here? The fact there's no starch anywhere to be found. I think that it was a risk. And I think if you conceptualize a dish correctly, you don't always need starch. You nailed the cooking here. The color is perfect. It's rested, basted it properly. You think this dish is going to take you to the next level? I hope so, chef. I don't want to be too confident, but I think I have impressed them. OK, tomorrow, will you please bring your dish up? Tamara, 
Tell me about it. Veal loin boiled and pan fried, some spatzel, tomato uh, reduction, and a tomato salad. So what did you think of this challenge? I think it was a really tough challenge. I'm a bit creative, and I like to kind of go outside the box. And today, I had to stay within the box. This is a very, very ambitious dish. Showing off a little bit here, right? Uh, no, I wanted to. You're not showing off? No. If I... you're not going to show off now, when, when are you going to show well, off? I'm a bit of a poker player. I wanted to do something that is going to set me apart from the rest of them. You have a perfectly cooked veal loin. Thank you. What is that with you Canadians? We know how to cook our meat. Uh, you know how to cook your <laughs> <Yeah>. meat. <laughs> what did you season it with? Just some salt and pepper. I think that this dish shows your ambition, but also at the same time shows a bit of your inexperience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I see the tomato salad, super simple, super straightforward, and super safe, which is a little unlike you. And then on the other side, it is far more gutsy and adventurous. Veal, nicely cooked. And I think you could have put considerably more white wine with that tomato base that you had there more olive oil, and had a much more luscious sauce. It's not perfect, but it's a decent dish. Thank you. Please join the others. We've tasted all your dishes, and now we need a moment to discuss. Everyone has a really good dish. I do not see a clear front runner. I think overall, they, they honored Italian ingredients really, really well. Absolutely. I definitely wasn't expecting top four to become top three. I'm super worried about going home. The yeah, level was high overall, I mean, I have yeah. to say. Oh, very impressive. Everyone had high points and low points, and I think this one was close. It was a little simplistic, right? You yeah. get that in a restaurant, yeah. you'd be very happy. Absolutely. That was fantastic, so. Yeah. Let's go break the news. Joe Bastianich will announce the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, but it will be up to the judges to announce who is going home. Overall, I was extremely impressed the way that you Canadian home cooks handled my favorite Italian ingredients. The person who made the best dish in this last mystery box challenge, who is about to become a top three finalist in MasterChef Canada is... Congratulations. So very much. Thank Great you. Great dish. Joe, on behalf of everyone here at MasterChef Canada, we want to thank you for coming up here. Thank you. And helping us make this incredibly important decision. Thank you. Good luck to you, home cooks. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. My pleasure. May the best home cook win. Good night. Thank you.